the story at the center of today's vlog is one that might make some of you guys kind of hate me, which I hope isn't the case, but I got thinking if a lot of these vlogs are going to be on a personal level and about personal things, it's not right to only tell stories where I come out looking good or, or stories that paint me in a good light. Everybody's got warts. I mean, I got, I, not literally, probably some of you don't. I, oh yeah, I don't want to talk about where mine are. Um, but everybody's got their downsides. Everybody's got the things that they're not proud of. And if I only talked about the good things, these vlogs really <laughs> aren't all that personal at all to begin, uh, at all. So anyway, today's story centers around the fact that I have a really dark place. I'm generally a, a very happy person. What you see in all the videos we do, whether it's reaction videos or, or anything we do, I'm always upbeat. I'm always charged up. And that's how I live my life. That's I, that's how I am, like 99.9% .9 of the time. But like everybody else, I have a dark spot inside. And the reason I bring it up is my dark spot, <laughs> it's very dark. And I think it stands out because I'm well aware of you know, what I'm good at in life and what I'm not good at in life. When I want to lash out at somebody or something, I'm really good at it. And I don't mean that physically. I mean, if I want to hit the heart, I can do it. And it lends towards, I, I'm pretty good. I think it's from all the years of stand up and entertainment. I'm pretty good with improvisation. And so whether that be comedic or just to try and make somebody feel so bad that they just want to slam their face into a wall, I'm pretty good at that. So I guess that's why the dark spot I have and when people access it, bad things happen. And the story I'm going to tell illustrates that. And the, the upside I can say is as I've gotten older, that dark spot's a lot harder to get to on me. For, and I'm not talking about temper necessarily, which also as I've gotten older, my temper, my temper can still be harsh, can be really strong but it takes a lot to get to it way more than it ever did when i was younger and this dark spot i have i think it's smaller and there's a lot more crust around it you got to get through a lot more layers before you actually tap into it but when somebody does and the only way you can really get to that spot i think anymore on me is by being a threat to my family whereas in the old days it didn't take much to get me to go there and that's what this story is about you see, years ago, I was, uh, let's see, I would have been a freshman in high school. And I changed schools. My family moved. Well, when I moved to my new school, there was a kid there that decided, like you'll find in most schools, I guess, that he, he was like one of the local tough guys and he was going to bully me. And so bully me he did as best he could. Um, I wasn't that prime a target because I would give it back to him. You know, he'd talk crap to me about this, talk shit to me about that, and, I, and I'd give it back. Well, it would gotten mildly physical here and there. I'd get a shove while I was in the hallways or this, that, or the other. Nothing too major. Had a little almost, you know, go around in gym class one day. But then one day I was standing at my locker and I'm just doing the combination and this asshole came. And I'm not going to mention his name. It took me a while to remember it anyway, but there's no sense. Um, and as the story goes, you'll see why. But anyway, he shoves my head into the locker. Boom, my head bounced off. As soon as it did, man, I saw black. I didn't know who, did. I had a good idea. I didn't know where he was standing exactly, but as I turned around, I was swinging. I mean, I threw a roundhouse. And talk about luck upon luck, hit him right in the head. I mean, it, just purely a luck shot because it was a wild swinging right. Bam, clipped him, down he goes. I went to get on him immediately as I got on him. A teacher was coming by, our gym teacher. He pulls me off. Breaks up the fight, which was too bad because, man, I, I knocked him goofy. And again, first to admit, it was just a lucky shot, but I got him good. So anyway, I get suspended. Um, he gets suspended. And I'll tell you a quick little side story. It was kind of funny. I, I go home. I got suspended. My father's asked me what happened. I told him the whole story. He said, well, you hadn't better be lying to me. I said, I'm telling you the absolute truth. We go in. And before you could come back to school, you had to go in and meet with the vice principal and they had to work everything out. And we go into the meeting with the vice principal and the vice principal's telling my dad that, you know, there's a zero tolerance policy for any type of um, violence or anything like that. And my dad goes, but wait a second, what, what my son told me was he got his head pushed into a locker and he swung at the kid who did it. 
And the vice principal says, well, it doesn't matter the reason. We have a zero tolerance policy. And my dad goes, well, what exactly was he supposed to do in that situation? And the vice principal goes, well, he's supposed to just get an adult, get a teacher, bring their attention to the situation. My dad says, after, so after the other kid's done punching him in the face and kicking and stomping on him, then get up and just go tell somebody? And the vice principal says, well, I doubt it would have come to that. And my dad goes, yeah, and it wouldn't have come to that. He says, look, my kid's not allowed to start fights, but he doesn't have to walk away from them. If you're not good with that, I guess he's not coming back to your school. And we left. By the time we got home, he'd called the house and told me to come back to school on Monday. But that's the side story to it. But that didn't end it. This kid just decided, especially there because everybody knew I clipped him, he was at me all the time. So now it became regular fights, just back and forth. And he was a tough kid. Don't, I, I didn't win all the fights. I mean, I, I held my own, but he was just, you know, the old adage, uh, you know, all bullies are cowards. If you, if you stand up to him, he'll go away. No, that's not true, because he wanted to bully me anyway, and so I had to keep fighting him. That summer, he was, him and some friends were swimming in a local creek. He got caught in a whirlpool, and he drowned. He died. As well, I say, as whatever we were at the time, ninth grade, what, what are we, like 14, 15? So, makes me a bad person. Uh, again, I, I, I can't tell this story in a way just trying to illuminate myself. I didn't care that he drowned. I hated the kid. I wasn't going to be... I didn't wish for him to drown. Like, that would have made it happen. But I'm not going to say that I, I cried. He drowned. Well, what happened was really odd. He had a brother that was a year younger than him. The brother decided that now I was his enemy. And now I don't know what his thought process was because I never really had much interaction with him before, but he was going to bully me. Now, the older brother was a tough kid. The younger brother thought he was, but he wasn't. So he would try and start shit with me. And because his brother was gone, I took it a little easy and I would just push him aside type thing. And he'd want to fight. And it's like, it's not even going to be a, a good fight because you suck. You're a crappy fighter. So he was always at me, at me, at me, trying, you know, especially in front of his friends. And I put up with it for a while. And then we played, it would have been, his brother died that summer. We went through the winter going through this. In the spring, we played baseball together. Our practices were at the local college. He'd been, we we're on the same team. And he'd been at me, at me, at me, just constantly. And it was starting to get to me. And I'd had enough. And I was pitching in a, a scrimmage game, a practice game, you know, against your own team. And I threw a pitch and I hit him. I didn't mean to hit him. I mean, I was playing the game and I just came too far inside. And as he's walking down to first, he's looking out at me. And he goes, huh, my mom hits me harder than that, you fucking faggot. He goes like that. And that, that was, he got into the black spot. And I took four or five steps off the mound, got right as close to him as I could get. And I said, how's your brother? And he went, and he like had a seizure and started crying and shit. I didn't know he was gonna cry. I didn't care that he was gonna cry. He just, he got to that spot. And I knew that I could say something that would probably damage him for the rest of his life, so I did. Why do I tell you guys this story? Because again, if we're gonna talk about person, that's, I think that's, if I have to pick one personality trait that I have that is the most undesirable and most disgusting, that's it, is that I can say things like that. Now, am I proud that I did that? No, absolutely not. If I was in the same situation today as an adult, as myself, if I was in that same situation, would I say it? No. No, I, I, I would think it, but I wouldn't come out and say it. I, I'd be able to take a step back and say, okay, he just lost his brother. And because I think that black spot is under more layers now, I wouldn't say it. Do I regret saying it to him? No. And that's the part that, I don't know if that's something that would make make you guys hate me, but no, I don't. And the reason I don't regret it is simply because I still feel in life, if you're going to be aggressive, if you're gonna come out swinging, you gotta expect sometimes to get your ass knocked out. Did I need to go that far? No, there was a lot of things I could have said to him. I could have called, just gone over before the coach got there and beat his ass if I wanted to. But I figured this, the black spot, and I said call it the black spot because it's such a rage that you're only seeing black, 
the black spot said this is a better way to get him because he'll never forget this and probably didn't but I can't I could say I regret it so that you guys will think well at least you know I've had an epiphany I've gotten older blah 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 and, and I know that was a horrible thing it, it, I came was it a horrible thing maybe from most people's perspectives but if I say I regret it I'm a liar he shouldn't have he didn't have to be outward attacking me all the time. And it just got to a point where I'd have had enough of being attacked. And it's like, okay, now I'm going to hit you back. And I'm going to hit you harder. And I still believe in life. If you're going to be an aggressive person, I am never, ever, to anyone, I am never outwardly aggressive for, for no reason whatsoever. There's not, I mean, if I'm going to say something pithy to someone, or if I'm going to take an aggressive stance towards someone, it's going to be as a reaction. It'll never be my first action. So I don't appreciate having it done to me. And he got me to the point where I didn't care. And so I don't regret saying it. And if he's still around to this day, he probably remembers it for just from the look on his face. I can't even, I can't convey to you the expression that he had on his face when I said that to him. I've never seen an expression on a person like that. I got the desired response. So if I have one thing that I think is very undesirable about me, it's that nasty little black spot. And I haven't tapped into that, thankfully, in many years. And hopefully I won't have to. Again, the only thing I could think of is my family being threatened for me to, to go into it. Because nothing else matters once you get there. It's just do what you got to do. And this is totally aside from my very dark sense of humor. I'll tell you one, I know this has run on for a long time, this one... Give me your judgment on this last story. Is this funny or is this just me being a douchebag? I worked for years. I'm retiring from uh, the municipality I work for. I worked as a garbage man. I'm in the sanitation department now as a driver. But I used to work as a picker behind the truck. Well, uh, it was a Thursday night and my partner was going to be out. Now, on my job, when we get done, at the, we go home. You get paid for eight hours, but however long it takes you, you go home. So I had things to do on that Friday. So they were asking... They had to go by seniority. They're asking guys who wanted to work with me the next day and replace my partner. Well, there was an older guy there. Again, I won't mention his name. There was an older guy there, and he said, yeah, I'll take it. And I came up to him, and I said, listen, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you first names only. I said, Bill, don't take it tomorrow. I'm running. I'm going to get done. I'm going to run my ass up. And I knew he couldn't keep up. I said, and if you don't keep up with me, I'll leave your ass on the streets because I got shit to do. Let it go to one of the younger guys or let it go to one of the guys that's, that can keep up. He goes, I'll keep up and said, I'm telling you, don't take it unless you're going to run all day because I will leave you. I'll do it. I'll do it. And to his credit, he came in and he did. And he was hurting. He was sweating. And he was gasping and hanging out of the truck by the end of the day. But he did. He, he stayed with me the whole day. That Sunday, he died. He had a heart attack and died. And of course, immediately everyone said, oh, Curtis, you killed him. Now, the truth be told, we found out later that he was supposed to be taking medication. He was very hillbillyish, and he wasn't taking it. And that's what actually killed him, was he wasn't taking his medicine. But a couple weeks after this, a bunch of us in sanitation were together, and our foreman at the time was getting ready to retire. And he said something, I didn't like the man to begin with, so I said something nasty to him. And he says, you know, you got to be nice to me. You ought to be nice to me. I'm not going to be here very much longer. And I said, yeah, well, Bill wasn't going to be here very much longer either, and I wasn't nice to him. That's my dark sense of humor. That didn't come from the dark place. I just thought that was a really funny line. The other guys went, <laughs> like they'd gotten punched in the chest. But I still stand by that as being comedy gold. I mean, it's not like any of Bill's family was there to hear it or anybody, you know, that was close to him was there to hear it. But I thought that was a pretty good line. What do you guys think? How how fucked up am I? Tell me, Tell me what you think and tell me, do you guys have that dark spot? Talk to you guys soon.